In this video, my fellow students and researchers, we are going to address a very important and key figure in smart PLS modeling or structural equation modeling. It is R squared in video number 14. And this is a step three in the structural model assessment. So what is R squared? It is actually the proportion of variance that is shown in the dependent variable or endogenous variable as a result of the impact of independent or exogenous variables. Usually this figure is shown in a percentage, as a percentage. A percentage of 25 is considered a weak impact or a weak R squared or coefficient of determination. However, R squared of 0.50 or 50% is considered moderate and R squared that is 75% is considered substantial or high impact or relationship. Therefore, R squared would differ from one industry to another, from one field of study to another, and sometimes as well, and most often, it increases and decreases with the number of independent variables that are influencing our dependent variable in the structural model that we have. We have another figure, which is called, you're gonna see that in Smart PLS, this is R squared adjusted. And this, this is usually used to allow for controlling model complexity when we have, or when we are comparing different model setups. Therefore, step number three is checking for R squared how in smart PLS to so running the normal algorithms in smart PLS. Please stay tuned for further details that are coming very shortly. All right, my fellow students, let's just have a demonstration of R squared in our uh, smart PLS uh, software or application. Okay, uh, first, I prepared some notes actually. I want to give you some explanation about R squared before we move on. Okay, so R squared, as I mentioned, it is a substantial or a statistical measure that would explain the proportion of variance for a dependent variable that's explained by independent variables. If we go to smart PLS right here, uh, we have our dependent variable is the actual system use, okay? And the uh, independent variables are these variables, okay? These are expected to have an influence or to impact or to have a variation in the actual system use, okay? So, 
what does it measure? R square measures the proportion of variance. Like for instance, if we study R with, let's say the color of apples, okay? Color of apples is one dependent variable. And what will influence it? For instance, if we consider fertilizers, water, sun, and the care of the agriculture, okay? So four independent variables. These are hypothesized to influence the color of apple, which is the dependent variable. So if the R squared as a result gets to a level of 0.4, for instance, so we can say that these four variables have a direct influence or a moderate influence on the color of apples. Okay, this is one simple example. In our case here, in small PLS as well, we are studying several variables here, okay? And expecting that these variables have a direct influence on the actual online uh, banking system use. Okay, so let us let me give you a bit more background information be before we dive into the actual calculations as a rule of thumb if we got an r square that is 0 0.5 or around that figure then we have a weak r square a weak proportion of variance okay if it goes to 0 0.50 or 50 percent then it is a moderate one 75% that's substantial, okay? And why does it change this way? It changes actually from one industry to another, from one discipline to another, from one field of study to another, okay? It may be, for instance, if we consider uh, social sciences, it may be moderate to weak in social sciences, uh, it all depends actually on each industry. I cannot generalize, it all depends. And usually the larger, as a rule of thumb, the larger the number of variables, independent variables, the higher the level of R squared that you may get. Okay, so R squared measures the model's predictive accuracy and it goes between zero to one zero percent to full one all right and it depends on the field of study and it allows like we have now we'll come to r squared and r squared adjusted you'll see those in the let, let, let's see that okay we have a model here all right okay let is let that's okay. We have this model here. Okay. Let's go and run the PLS algorithms. Okay. That's how we go and calculate to get R squared. Okay. That's the R square tab right here. Okay. Right here. This is the R square tab. Okay. We simply click on this one. And we can see our R squared. Okay, it is 0 0.226, which is 22.6%. In this case, it is weak, actually. For the sake of this model, it is weak. However, if we if we increase the number of our independent variables or endogenous variables, it may it may increase a bit. Uh, let's say we have, we added the variable, which is trust here, okay? Uh, all right, let me control, okay, shift, okay, just a sec, okay, then shift, all right, and then take it to here, and then let me connect this with this one, all right? Directly with actual system use. All right, let me see now, rerun the algorithm. We had a 22.6. Let's see if we get any change in the R, R square here. Okay, calculate PLS algorithm, start calculation, and then we go to R squared. See, 
there is some change. It was 22.6%. And now, as you notice here, all right, it is 23.1%, okay? It is 23.1% or yes, it is 23.1% here. So we had a change as a result of adding one independent or one endogenous variable right in here, okay? Right in here. Uh, so, R squared is the third step that we do in the process of structural model assessment. We have already covered collinearity issues as well as the significance of structural model relationships. We covered R squared in this video. In coming two videos, we're going to tackle F squared and Q squared, the effect size and the predictive relevance. Please stay tuned. Bye-bye for now.